is my first YouTube video. What? They don't tell you before you get a super pupa catheter. You're probably thinking if you're new to all of this, what the hell is a super pupa catheter? So a super pubic catheter is not your normal catheter that you're probably thinking of. So the more common catheter is an indwelling catheter, um, which is a catheter that goes through your urethra, which is now your private parts, just in case you're wondering. Um, however, a super pubic catheter goes at the bottom of your abdomen slash your pubic line. I've taken up enough of this video already rambling on, which you'll get used to with me, I ramble a lot. Um, but yeah, let's get into that. Number one, the thing they do not tell you when you get a super pubic yeah. catheter placed is that you can choose your own catheter brand. Now, you're probably thinking, what the hell? What do you mean you can choose your own catheter brand? Now, I'm speaking strictly for the UK um, and the NHS. But yes, there's several brands, there's several types of catheters, there's several materials of catheters. It's basically a combination of latex and silicone. We'll get into that in a minute. But yeah, you can choose your own brand. Of course, I can only speak from my experience. I've had both a latex and a silicone catheter. Um, <laughs> I don't like latex catheters. I'm just going to say it. Um, no. Nah. Obviously, if you have a latex allergy, then you're going to have problems. But, um, yeah, I prefer all silicone catheter. More specifically, I use Link Medical's open tip catheter. There's an opti tip and there's an open tip. I only use open tip. So if you're wanting to try that out, I highly, highly recommend The second thing they do not tell you when you get a super pubic catheter place is... You don't have to wear gauze 24-7. In fact, actually, majority of the time, they actually recommend you don't use gauze 24-7. It's a naturally sweaty area, and it is a bacteria breeding ground. So when you have something constantly covering it, it's a recipe for disaster. This goes for tubey pads as well. They are very, very cute, but they're designed more for feeding tubes and then super pubic catheters. I mean, there's nothing stopping you from wearing them. Just do not wear it 24-7. They don't tell you that you can travel. It's actually like having a normal body. It's the same as anyone else. Obviously with the fact that you forgot to carry around a catheter bag, but you could use a flip flow if you wanted to. I mean, I've traveled to Florida with flow. Um, so that was a nine plus hour flight from England. The thing is, going on a plane, a boat, a train, a car makes absolutely no difference. The only thing I did find was that Flo struggled to drain when I was in the air. So just make sure you're staying hydrated. But other than that, Aww. it's no difference. You can go swimming. When I was like first had Flo placed, I was given no information whatsoever. And obviously, if you look online, majority of the things say meh. They're kind of here and all there. You can go swimming with a super pubic catheter. You can wear a belly bag, you could rock a leg bag, or you could wear a flip flow. It's completely up to you. All I would say is put a protective gauze on it, just to give yourself that little bit of extra protection. Um, and make sure you have an antibiotic cream for afterwards, just so you're covered. But other than that, you can go swimming. Five, sex, we're gonna talk about it. Honestly, no different. Again, wear a belly bag, rock a night bag or a leg bag. I'm sure your partner will not mind. Um, all wear a flip though. There is several companies out there that actually do provide kind of lingerie that's made for super pubic catheters. You just have to look. Um, my biggest recommendation would be to use a catheter securement device. So I use Clinifix. Um, Clinifix almost looks like a plaster. I'll show you. So these are Clinifix. They literally look like a big plaster. But yeah, like that. Secures your catheter. It's all good to go. There's also Yugo Fix. Um, G straps. There's loads of different things that you could use. You just need to look and find what one's best. <laughs> now this one I had to learn the hard way 
when you have your super pubic catheter placed, it's not going to be like, whoa, life is completely different, um, everything's rainbows and butterflies. It's not. A super pubic catheter is a foreign object. It's not actually designed to be there. Your body obviously has to have time to adjust. Um, my biggest bit of advice would be get your antispasmodic. Um, make sure that you've got everything in place so there's no stressing after your placement. And you will have to try different products. They don't tell you this. But you will. I can promise you. I have tried several different things. I think I've tried four or five different catheter brands. Two different materials. Which is obviously latex and silicone. And yeah. Once you find your catheter that suits your body. Things start to get better. Not to mention. You may have to do an extra alternative therapy. Like Hyacyst. Which is a bladder installation. Which is what I do highly recommend it um or even bladder botox like not everyone can just have a super pubic catheter go on their way and everything's dandy but i promise you if you keep pursuing things and you try things you have a better chance of liking your super pubic seven now this one might seem a bit weird but it works um so before flow was placed i was told by a nurse to name my magical device so it would create a bond the idea is if you give your medical device a name especially something that you associate as happy or funny something that makes your brain think oh yeah that's nice you create a bond and that definitely worked for me and Flo. My mum actually picked Flo's name and I thought it was quite funny because obviously P flows. But um yeah, so every time I say the name Flo, I'm kind of like, huh, that's funny. So yeah, definitely try to find a name. Right. That's... If you were f like if you follow me on Instagram you'll know I'm I don't believe in TMI. I also don't believe in horror stories. Everyone has their own stories and this is what doctors don't tell you. Every single person with a super pubic catheter is completely different. What suits you may not suit me and vice versa. So when it comes to things like tube changes, everyone is different. Bef my, the night before um, I had flow placed, I almost called it off. It was only because my amazing boyfriend said, no, actually, you need this. Like, your body needs this, that I went through with it. But I was petrified. I wasn't given one positive story. I was given 101 horror stories. And, yeah, it just wasn't a nice experience. So I went in very very scared so all my biggest piece of advice for everyone is yes do your research but understand that everyone with a super pubic catheter is completely different and that like i said you have to try different things before you kind of get your groove line tube changes yes you will have to have your super pubic catheter changed i was kind of like great here we go this is where the catch comes in. So, again, everyone's very different. I personally am very fortunate to have positive tube changes. All I will say is I do try different things. And again, it's this whole thing where you have to find what suits your body. So, I use Entonox with my tube changes and I highly recommend it. Um, you are more than entitled to it before someone says you're not. You are. You just have to push for it. I also, I don't anymore, but I used to take um, a painkiller beforehand. And what I do do now is I make sure I drink some water. So, like, if I have a bottle of water, I'll make sure I drink maybe 200 mils. I mean, you can drink more if you want to. But this just stops your catheter from suctioning against your bladder wall which makes tube changes more painful. 
obviously where I also do high assist, I have an extra protective GAG layer in my bladder, which makes tube changes for me a lot, lot easier. And again, I have link catheters, open tip catheters. So the theory behind that is they're meant to be easier for changes, but I know a couple of people who don't find that. Again, everyone's body is completely different. What I would say is definitely, definitely try them. It's been life changing for me. Um, and the other thing about tube changes that people do not tell you, doctors, maybe even people with superuvic catheters, do not leave your catheter to just fixate in one spot. You're probably like, wait, what do you mean? Like, you can't move it. You can. You can twist your superuvic catheter. Again, be very, very careful. Please don't hurt yourself but um you can gently twist your super pubic catheter now this stops a build up of debris which makes tubes changes so much and, and again i had to find this out the hard way and it made the beginning of my journey with flow pretty unpleasant so i stayed in the hospital two three days i had a reaction to an antispasmodic um i'm also very complex so i kind of expected to stay However, some people go home straight away. Everyone's different again. But I left not knowing that you need codes. And you'd be like, Vic, codes? What do you mean codes? Yes, you need codes to get your super pubic catheter supplies. So I use Charter or Solar Plus Charter. Um, and when I came home, I didn't realise that I needed coats, so when I went to make my order, it was the case of, you need coats, we can't do anything for you, um, and it actually took me going back to the ward and talking to a nurse that was at a desk, and she actually helped me place my first order, however, you have me, I'm here to help you, you don't need to go back to the ward and ask the nurse, um, I'll make sure I list all the codes below, obviously, if you're wanting different products, I may not have your codes, but it's quite simple to find the codes. Not that I knew back then, but you can go on Charter's website and they do have the codes written down next to the products. And all products, if I go on to Clinifix again, have the codes at the bottom. Obviously, I didn't know that. I didn't know that they were printed on the products. I didn't know that they were on Charter's website. I kind of just thought, you just make an order, as anyone else would think. But, no, you need We're 11. Code. You can choose your own delivery company. So, I chose uh, Sally Plus Charter. I've had quite a good experience with Charter, and I haven't needed to change to anywhere else. But I know a couple of girls that use... Um, Bow and Bladder, I do believe it's called, and there are different companies out there. So you just have to find which one's best for you. Um, again, it's trial and error. There have been times where things have been more difficult to get. There's been things that are out of stock, especially during the whole pandemic situation. But yeah, you can choose your own. Number 12. You can do your own bladder washouts at home. Um, not many people know this or realise that you can. And honestly, it's given me so much independence. But of course, you have to be taught how to do it. All you have to do is ask. So when I went into have flow placed, I asked the nurse before I left and I said look I want to do my own bladder washouts um can I be approved to do so please and she said yes of course she explained the situation she showed me what to do what not to do um talked about resistance which is a very real thing um and yeah I was approved to do it I've done my own bladder washouts for nearly two years and I also do my own high assist installations um which of course I'll touch on high assist in a different video it deserves a whole video to itself but yeah, you can do your own therapies. This gives you some independence, but it also stops you having to go to A&E every single time that your cavity is blocked. 
which happens because you have debris in your bladder. Debris is a naturally reoccurring thing in your bladder, which you don't see because you don't normally inspect your urine when you go in the toilet for your urethra. It's only when you have a catheter that you actually notice that it's there. However, because of obviously the debris has to come through your catheter tube, which if I show Flo, if I can lift her up and off, better not pull her out. That'd be a whole different video. But like, this is the tube. So the debris has to come through there. So sometimes it does get blocked or you get debris build up in the tube. So doing your own washouts prevents you having to go to A&E, which can I just say, none of us want to do. 12 things that they don't tell you before you get a superior catheter place. There is so many more, like you kind of learn as you go along. And honestly, the best advice I could give someone is to join the cat super pubic catheter groups on Facebook, go on Instagram and follow people like me who show you real real life experiences with super pubic catheters instead of reading the Bob Basic this is what a super pubic catheter is, which is what unfortunately I did. Link Medical actually have quite a few videos called Continence Chats where they talk about different catheters and I, I do believe there's quite a few women on there that have super pubic catheters so that might be a good thing for you to start with watching but again please understand that everyone's experience is their own and please don't listen to the horror stories I like I said I was absolutely petrified and there's no need to be that petrified before taking this massive journey in your life so take everything with a pinch of salt and if you want to see more from me, comment, subscribe and like below. Um, if you have any questions on super pubic catheters, please leave them below and I will do my best to answer. I'm not a medical professional, however I do live with a super pubic catheter and I do have nearly two years of experience with them. Again, if you want to see more of me, I mainly post on Instagram, so definitely give that a like it's just tricky um yeah and until next time bye number 12 i forgot what the fuck it is <laughs> which is an in oh my lord <laughs>